Comic Gizmo Podcast, everyone. Episode 177. Ooh. Ooh. Um, I told you a guest was coming on. I said I was going to have a guest. The first guest that I was initially going to have, he, he, he bounced. He didn't, you know, he totally flaked on me. He said he was going to be here at this time, and then he didn't show up. So, we got another guest, all right? And this guest, I've talked about this this guy, this person before. I've put him in a thumbnail a few episodes back, and it's pretty crazy that I got him on. Uh, we had a great conversation, a little bit about politics, because today is November 4th, you know, the day after the, 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 the actual election. Still don't know who the president is, so obviously we had to talk about that. But then we got into, you know, who he is himself, what he's doing, and some questions I had. We, he didn't have a lot of time, only an hour, but that was perfect. That was just enough. So today's guest is Alex Two-Tone, all right? You know him from Powerful Truth Angels. You know him from Born and Raised. You know him for, maybe you know him for his graffiti work, or maybe you don't. But either way, uh, it was a great episode. I enjoyed having him on. Uh, super stoked. I'm a huge fan of Two Tone and Maddie Matheson and Powerful Truth Angels. So here is <laughs> here <laughs> here is episode 177 of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast. Alex Two Tone. Enjoy, everyone. So first off, I just want to say thank you for doing this. Like I really appreciate it. Um, I've been trying to reach out to a lot of people, and you're like one of the few people who actually, you know, were willing to come on here. So, I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, man. I saw, I looked, I checked out your setup, and I'm like, this dude's very serious. <laughs> look at your, you have, like, you have like real. Look at that. Look at your mic cord. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Look at this stuff. Yeah, well, I've, I've I've been doing it for a few years now. I'm not. I'm still not. You know, an established person you know on the platform at all but i'm really committed to just you know doing this podcast and i don't plan on uh stopping anytime soon but um you know i uh, i don't want i don't like to get political or anything but i feel like right now like we're right <laughs> we're right in the moment of this election right now and i feel like it's kind of hard to just not talk about it at all um, do you, like, do you feel like right now is like such a chaotic time? And, like more chaotic than it's ever been right now, especially with the elections. It seems like it seems like nobody, nobody, nobody can cooperate. Nobody can agree with each other. If you're not one thing, and you're the other thing, it's automatically like people got to attack you. Yeah, I think that. Where are you? Where are you? Uh, where are you at? Where are you coming from? Well, I'm in Canada, but like, I follow a lot of what goes on in America. Okay, so you're in Canada. Yeah, I was gonna say I was gonna relate it to like where you're at. I mean, look, I look at America as, uh, I mean, I love I love my country. I hate what. I hate it also. Like, yeah. There's a lot of things about the country that are fucked up, like any country, like any civilization. And I think that, um, you know, trying to, I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen in America that can't happen anywhere else. And there's a lot of things that happen here. You know, like, I talk about this shit all the time. And one thing that people, I don't even know, I'm, I'm just spiraling. I'm going to a rabbit hole right now. But like, if you mm -hmm. think about, if you think about, um, I think that the, the, holding the office of the president of the United States of America is a very dirty job, no matter who it is. Right. right? You're instantly, I mean, as soon as you, as soon as you accept the position, you're probably a murderer right out the gate. It's just part of the deal. Mm -hmm. It's part of being in control of, you know, what, uh, what was being in control of a waning superpower, you know, in, in the world. And if you are a superpower, then you're, you're essentially getting your hands very dirty to maintain that because humans are, are, 
you know, for, since the beginning of, 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 of humanity, we've been murdering each other. Um, and we've just gotten a little softer and more technical with it, but we're still doing it. It's part of our nature. And the job is a horrible job. Right. Um, and I don't, I don't really put faith in many politicians, but, and that's, that is what it is. But what's happened now is, is Trump has, <clears throat> he figured out a strategy to kind of weaponize and, and divide people. And, and, he, and, he, and he, you know, the, the, the dog whistling and the fucking radiating and all this shit that he does. Uh, he's polarized a bunch of people that were kind of had become silent, you know. Um, and, um, and he's polarized these people to where now, you know, I think that and, 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 and the, um, the onslaught of like reality TV, which led into social media and also Russian meddling. And, you know, and also the fact that America has been, uh, having their way with, uh, you know, the rest of the world for a pretty long time, um, mm -hmm. has led to this like thing where we are going to either, uh, implode, evolve, or become one of the most horrible places ever. Right. And I don't think there's, there's any other way for us to like, we can't go, it can't go on the way it's going on. And, um, so, you know, I mean, I guess that's kind of, you know, unfortunately that's where we're at. And, you know, while all this is going on, it's like, you know, there's other, you know, other, it's in other superpowers interest for us to be this divided. And, you know, it's a mess. It's a fucking mess. I don't even know what I said made sense, but it's a fucking mess. No, that, yeah, that's kind of what I'm trying to get at is like, aside from just the presidency itself, it just seems like the people can't cooperate. Like what happened to the, what happened to just being able to you know, accept other people's views on, on whatever it is they feel about whether it's politics or not, it everything has turned political. It doesn't matter what you're talking about, people have to turn it into into politics now. And it's it's so it's so divided like you can't express any sort of opinion. Well you can, but you can immediately be attacked and cancelled and, and you got you gotta be so careful nowadays and I just it really worries me. And I'm worried that even, you know, whether or not Biden gets in or Trump, I don't, I don't, I feel like either way, it's, it's not going to be a, a good result. And, you know, anything that happens in the United States, it affects Canada directly as well. So, like, we get affected by America's decisions as well. Yeah, I mean, Biden, Biden is, is the definition of the status quo. And, uh, you know, um, but I think that here's the problem is I'll take status quo who will nuke this country just so he can put his name on it when they rebuild it. Right. You know, like he does not, he, he does not give a fuck. Um, yeah, man, like, you know, this shit is, um, I just think that. I don't think that Trump, I mean, he's just weaponized. Like, he's got a whole bunch of people voting that didn't vote, didn't give a shit. He's weaponized a bunch of people that, like, you know, mostly kind of kept their shitty views to themselves, and now they're emboldened. Mm -hmm. So now they're like, you know, like, I see, I try not to be, I try not to be, because I, I also think there's a lot of fucked up shit going on on the left, too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that, like, you know, but I do believe that, Look, there are there are certain things that you're never going to convince me are, are are wrong, right? The rights for people to be who they want to be, to marry who they want to marry, to express themselves how they want to express themselves. I feel like that shit, you know, the rights for people not to get beat up by cops, uh, you know, the right the rights for systemic racism and mis and, and injustice to be recognized and addressed, and and you know, I feel like these are things within a country that takes care of its people should be taken care of. But all our country cares about is is making money off of its inhabitants. Right. That's all we give a shit about yeah. is is it's in this idea of like a quote unquote American dream and getting rich. That's all anyone cares about yeah. from the top to the bottom. So, you know, um, unfortunately, at least a lot of people on the cold. And there's other there's other there's other countries and, and nations that, that actually are like looking after people and, and trying to be sustainable and trying to take care of each other and thinking about the environment. But the people, you know, these old fuckers at the top, these old frog throat motherfuckers mm -hmm. are holding, you know, they're, they, they're, I think they're like, they're like the most nihilist 
crazy people ever because they're just like, fuck it. I think they, I feel like they know they're in denial or they know it's all coming to an end and they're like, we need to, we need to leave with as much money as we can. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. like we want to die super rich. Like that's all they know. And it's like, they're sick. Like, it, you know, like, it, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. And you know, yeah, I don't know, man. Like I, it's so easy to point a finger at Trump and say he's this and this, but it's, it's also very like, Mm-hmm. He very clearly is playing this game of, of um, you know, he's like playing this. I know you are, but what am I? Well, I didn't say that. You know, it's like when, a, when someone points their finger in yeah. your face and says, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. Like he does that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't say I support the KKK. I didn't say I support the Proud Boys. I didn't say, you know, I just said stand by and stand close. You know, it's like this crazy game he plays. And, and half of our country loves it. We fucking they fucking love this shit. They love this WWF fucking Frito Lay motherfucker. Like they love it. It's super this entertaining, is America, man. Like this motherfucker. Yeah, like he's he's the American id. Like he is he is the most horrible, scary American fucking nightmare id. Like he, I we fucking like on a, on on a level. I don't deserve it, and I don't think my friends deserve it. But America as a country deserves Trump because we've done a lot of fucking dirt, you know. Right, right, and I mean the 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 results aren't even available yet like they're still they're still counting in all the mail in ball- ballots i think pennsylvania from what i've seen i think it's pennsylvania is like the desi- the the deciding factor of this whole thing if Bi- if biden or trump wins pennsylvania that's going to determine the whole thing am i correct on that or do you know i don't know because i actually for this one Here's, here's where I felt like going into this. A couple of days before the election, I talked to a couple of people, and we all talked. Guys I respect, my brother, a guy I work with, a few other a few other people who have a good beat on things. We're like, Trump's going to win. We just, it's like, and I, and I just basically made the decision that he was going to win, and I made I made peace with it. Because when he won last time, I was devastated. I was fucking crushed. I couldn't even fucking believe it. Yeah. Now I'm like, now I'm like, okay, well, it's damage control. What do I do now? I got to figure out how to, you know, I got to the last four years. I'll try to get to the next four years. He doesn't melt the country. Mm-hmm. The thing, look, the problem with this motherfucker is that he's stupid. He's yeah. really, like, he's really good. He's a really good fucking salesman, carnival barker, bullshit artist. Mm-hmm. Like, he's very, very talented. He's really, he's a king of the fucking trolls. Like, he's an expert. But I don't think that he's, I don't think he has any emotional intelligence. I don't think he has any concept of anything beyond what he wants. And that's the most dangerous person you can have running the country. Yeah. And, uh, and he can, he can put us in a position where like, you know, he can, he's so easily baited. Like you can, you can bait this guy into a war if you want, like easily. Like he's just, I don't know, man. It's crazy. Anyway, I don't even know what you asked me. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, what did you ask? No, no, it's, you, oh, it's, it's you fine. But, um, spiraling. I don't. I, yeah, I don't want to stay. I don't. I don't want to stay on politics forever. Like we can. We can wrap up politics here. But I just think. Like who do you? St- so you really think Trump's going to win still? Or I don't know, man. Like I thought he was going to win. Uh, I was pretty sure he's going to win, and because he's really rallied these these people behind him, and like and the QAnon thing and the New Age movement, like he's he's galvanized everybody through different you know the different channels. And I thought he was going to win. And then you're looking at the polls, and he might not win. He's already claiming that he won. Yeah. Which everyone knew. Yeah. That's his deal. And, you know, even, like, the conservatives are saying, hey, slow down. You know, like, you can't, can't do um, Like, you know, there's there's still conservatives who believe in the structure of our country, who aren't willing to, to warp reality. Yeah. You know, and the, the thing with Trump is that he – Trump is, like, he's like a fucking wizard. Like, he warps reality. Like, he's, like, he's practicing fucking – high level witchcraft like he says things until they become true right he just says it he just keeps saying things until it just becomes in the consciousness and anyone that's gullible and 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 and, uh, and, cul- and can is malleable just gets gets fucking uh um, formed to what he wants you know right. like there's an interesting thing about i heard a podcast about um trump's family uh, they belong to this strange uh sect of i don't know what the thing is it's some weird religious sect where they kind of dealt with a kind of strange, like slightly witchcrafty idea of like speaking things into power. And that's right. a big part of what he does. He says, I'm not sick. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the biggest. I'm the best. Like he just keeps saying things over and over again and they fucking become true. And the, and the guy's like, 
it, and technically he's a fucking broke failure. Like he's a billion dollars in debt, you know? Yeah. Um, it's all a facade. Anyways, that, it, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's fucking horseshit. And like, you know, but that's like a lot of what America is. Like we're all kind of running on fumes and credit and, mm-hmm. you know, we're all bullshitting and pretending that we're something we're not. And, you know, no one fucking owns anything and everyone's fucking broke, but has, you know, a car and six iPhones. And it's like, yeah, you know, we're all kind of like scrambling, you know, like, like, you know, I don't know. And, and, and hopefully there's, um, I don't, you know, the only resolution is like, you know, the weird resolution is some sort of change, something where something changes radically. And the problem with change is that you don't, it doesn't come without breaking some fucking eggs, right? Like, yeah. for in order for a huge change to happen in America, there's got to be a huge, a huge change and that's not going to be pretty. No. And, um, and I don't, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to be in a fucking civil war. Like I'm not down. I still want to live my life and like, you know, I still want to order Postmates and shit. Yeah. Um, but it's, know, it's, eat- it's a common trend throughout history though. You know, it is, right? like it's a, you get to some sort of civil war, you figure out your differences, everything's good for a little while. And then you start to lose, lose sense of what really matters. And then, you know, it's a trend, it's a cycle. So like it's, a, it's, al- it's almost inevitable that we're going to end up in some sort of, you know, civil so war. Term- yeah. And, it, and it, the idea too is historically that what we've been pitched is that the good guys always win the wars, right? Like you know, World War Two, the Civil War, like those wars were, you know, Nazis and slavery, like those things were well well fought wars, right? But yeah. like, you know, maybe that doesn't happen. Maybe maybe they, maybe the, the quote unquote good guys don't win this war, and we go into a fucking you know some sort of crazy redneck fascist fucking you know yeah. Uh, dictatorship that that people you know with with Red Bull you know I don't know <laughs> yeah and then we all we all kill each other and then the the whole everyone everyone on the planet's done and then we start all over again who knows I mean and yeah the clock's ticking also like what is there like you know what, there's not a hundred years left in this fucking pen anyways right like yeah maybe we're all coming to the fucking culmination I mean I think the only hope for us is like uh, we all just get you know this. Just let's just plug into the matrix and eat fucking digital states. You know, I'm down. Like, hook yeah. Me up. Give me, give me like you know. Yeah, but put me on. Use me for energy. Feed me fucking ice cream. Keep me <laughs> ripped. And and um, you know, I'm down. Let's let's just fucking do that. Yeah, I mean, it's much easier. I don't. Have to pay yeah, like why? Why do we have to do all this other bullshit? Like we're we're pretty we're pretty adv- pretty advanced as a as a world, you know. Like why can't we just move past all the bullshit? It seems like we're stuck in the past. We're stuck in these past I- ideologies. Like we can't we can't move forward. I mean, it's also like you know the the way things work is. Nothing in America, I can't speak for anywhere else, but it's probably the same. Nothing happens. Nothing changes without some serious fucking shit getting broken, right? Like yeah. Rosa Parks had to, you know, in the civil rights movement, right? Right. She's like one of the, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the marquee corners on like, uh, figures of that movement. She had to, make that statement, whatever that was, right? And I'm sure it's, it's, it's a lot more intricate than just, like, she happened to do a thing. But that was a series of, like, in order to make those the civil rights movement, like, you had to break some fucking eggs. No one's going to give you anything, yeah. right? you got to fucking fight for it. And, and, and physically, like, blood has to be shed for things to change because nobody wants to let go of what, of what they have. Right. And no one wants to give up their piece of the pie. No one wants to be nice, right? So, like... Yeah, if there is a if there is a structure of, of white um, supremacy, um, it's in their best interest not to let go. Yeah, and it's in their best interest to not like, give it up. You know, it's like in business. Like if you ever do business with people, a businessman's job is to fuck you, right. and to get as much as he can for his side of the like to, to to cut as much out of the pie as he can, and that's just the way the fucking world works. Unfortunately, yeah. right? Like. Uh, you know, we're no longer living in some hunting gathering culture where we all share berries and fucking elk meat. Yeah. We're all fighting for you know some stupid um, 
whatever credit i don't even know and like mm -hmm. so yeah in order for shit to happen like you know gay rights like or for, for in order for people to have gay rights they had to go to fucking war they had to organize and go to war and march and fight yeah. and fucking like yeah. i mean it was like you know anything like that happens and and you know this and and, and also while that ha while that shit happens you also have like the people in power doing counter uh the people in power using their their structures to like you know like in the civil rights movement um you know you had people like the cia getting involved in the fbi to like destabilize like it's fucking dirty and um and uh you know in in, in order for things to change people got to fucking fight and um yeah, any anyone on top is ultimately dirty in some in some fashion, you know. Even even the FBI, even the CIA. Oh, I, the mo are you kidding me? Like they're like the, the CIA was like, they're, dude, they, look, they know shit, right? Like, there's not there's a reason why the the FBI would monitor rappers, right? Yeah. And I used to wonder why the fuck was the FBI give a shit about fucking Tupac or any of these other people, right? Why? And I realized that they know something I don't know, and that they know that they're scared of people being galvanized and organized because they know that, like, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but and I'm not, but they know that there's like a wild injustices that have been that have been you know um, um, done or whatever. Uh, you know, against me. I mean, it's it's so it goes so deep. Like even even if you go back to reading the school books I used to read, that just it leaves out giant chunks yes. of information. Yeah. And repaints history. Yeah. Uh, with with the you know, with us as as the as the as the knights in white armor, and 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 not necessarily us like white people. You know, or even it, it's just it's crazy. Like without being a conspiracy theorist, how much work goes into preserving the structure. Um, and this goes back hundreds of years, but into preserving the structure that was built, right? Right. And it, and it, and it, and it keeps getting more sophisticated. And we're and also on top of all this shit, like we don't know how to deal with fucking social media. Yeah, right? I was just but, gonna say that. Yeah, social media has made things so much more complicated. It's we did we didn't even realize what it was gonna do when it was invented. Like no one would have predicted Twitter would have such an impact as it did now. Like we just thought it was some stupid website where you tell people what you ate for breakfast or something, but look what it's turned into. Yeah, did you know that Facebook would become your like identifying system to work move to the world in a way people can keep tabs on you? Like, and also we're not like listen, listen, I'm I'm not stupid, and I have a hard time managing all the information I get from. And I have a hard time managing myself on social media and all the information. And like, I'm in it. I'm caught up in it, right? Mm -hmm. And and I'm not even in it like other people. And then if you take someone who's fucking dumb and you feed them all this information, yes. they don't know how to disseminate real and what isn't real. Yeah. And they're getting fed so much shit. They're so easily manipulated because they're fucking stupid. Yeah. You show them a well-produced YouTube video and you can convince them of fucking anything. I know. Because we've been fed been raised like video on media as fucking kids right we've been raised on television and then television turned to reality tv and we reality and then from that we've just been led trajectory and and we're and we're so easily fed information now they just figure out them with six youtube videos and you opinion on anything it's like you know like like the first time you watch like one of those conspiracy movies, like Loose Change or something, yeah. and it fucks you up for a week, yeah. you know, and like you don't know if it's real or not. It's so well produced because we're used to watching blockbusters, and they, they yeah. we're used to watching these information informational things, and it's so slick and it's so well done. And if it's well done, you believe it's real, yeah. You know? And that's that's look, we're we're in a very we're in a very fractured like people talk about virtual reality and the singularity. We're fucking in it. It's happening right now. This. This shit right here mm -hmm. is this is VR. Like we're there's another world in my phone that's happening right now. There's fucking a billion people here doing shit. Yeah, and I'll tap in and I'm in there for an hour with, and then I tap out and I'm in the world. And I gotta make money so I can jump in here and and figure out how to make more and do shit. And then I gotta come out here and eat. And then you know it's like it's crazy because it's here. You know. Yeah. It's like, well, our our, our 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 cell phones and our computers and our tablets they're basically just an extension of our body at this point. It's not even. Like you said, it's not even like it's a separate thing. It's, like, it's part of us. 
Like if you lose yeah, if you lose your cell phone, you're it's like panic mode. Yeah. Um, no, they they um like I remember they used to talk about this like singularity thing about them putting a the chip in your head and like this being the thing where you yeah. merge and I'm like this is I remember like Ray five, Kurzweil years, touched like, on that. Dude. Right. And but the reality is it's this thing is never more than uh, six inches away from my body, twenty four hours a day. It's under my pillow at night. Uh-huh. It's already happened here, dude. Like it's yeah. done. We're fucking toast. The only thing next is like once we get once there's a generation that's okay with implants, right? And it's and it's probably coming up now. Like it's probably my friends' kids or or whoever. Like yep. once they're okay with it, it makes sense to them. Then it's like we're fucking cyborgs. So like that might be a way out too. Like maybe we could do all plug into some database, right? And maybe we are just like. We become, you know, Avatar. You know, it's probably better. You know, I mean, humanity is fucking torched. It's a mess. Yeah. And we're just, we're just, we got too much too soon. We're too dumb, and America's too fucking rich and too stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, and we devalue, we we devalue the intelligence and intellectualism, and, and, and we value fucking uh, fake butts and fucking you know expensive <laughs> cars. And that's kind of where where our value is. You know. Yeah. Exactly. And we fuck just gone you know well i want i want to talk about i want to talk about pta for a little bit here since i don't have much time with you is there is there going to be a moment where you and maddie are going to do a graffiti slash cooking thing in person rather than over zoom because i think that would be much more better maddie's coming to town in about Three weeks. Which I knew that because I saw your most recent episode. Yeah. And we're going to do an in-person... We're going to do in-person shows, and I do want to line up... We're trying to figure out... I want to line up a graffiti barbecue, which would just be me and him and maybe a couple other people. Right. And you know what? It's funny. I need to... Like, the funny thing is, like, I have to line that up. I have to sit down with Jason and make it happen. So, I think we should. I want to do it. I want to fucking paint... Yeah, uh, I want to. I want to paint. Maybe we have to both cook. Maybe me and Maddie paint. I want to. I want to see. And, I want to see uh, what. I want to see what you can do, because like as fans of PTA, you know the the PTA fans was mostly yeah. just like Maddie Matheson fans, who came in and they discovered yeah. you through this. Like I didn't know who you were. I thought you were a complete asshole the first yeah. time I saw you, as did most people. But you've you've grown, and yeah. I actually. <laughs> Yeah, I but I actually appreciate you now that I've got to know you a little bit better. Yeah. But yeah, and like and now that I now that I, Now that I know that you like are like, you know, a professional graffiti artist, I really would love to see what you can do and I would love to see what Maddie can do with you next to him. Cuz I feel like Maddie did a good job with you over Zoom, but I feel like he could do much better. I think that that's got to happen. Yeah. I think that we can do it two ways. Like I can re, I can coach him on a piece this time, or I can set him up for disaster and let him do his own piece. Right. And I know Maddie has a hubris to try to do that, and I know that he's like, I can do it, man. I'm fucking, I don't need you. And like, yeah. he'll he'll die. He'll he'll make the worst piece in the world, and I will <laughs> make the burner. I I'm actually like, I might have, I might have the homie Alloy come because he's been. I have a buddy from my crew who I've never painted with directly, who's been bugging me for a couple years of paint, and I keep telling him I'm retired. Uh-huh. But I might have Alloy come out and paint with us. Right. And have Maddie paint. And, and maybe we do it. I'll have Alloy paint, I'll have Maddie paint, and maybe I'll have this dude come do barbecue. I'll ask him if he'll do it. Right. And we'll pay for him to do barbecue. Um, and, um, and maybe that's the move. And we and, do a whole thing. And you like, know? you... And we have fun with it, and I think... You throw you throw all these like terms around all the time. Like what I don't what does toy mean? What does that mean when you say that? Toy. Toy is basically like, look, if you do graffiti, you're gonna be a toy for like four years, right? It's just a, it's just someone who's bad at graffiti. Just like a really b- amateur? An amateur. Like there's people that are actually toys. There's people that have been painting for twenty years that are still toys. You can't tell them that, but they are. Um, it's just someone who's bad at it. Like, you know, there's a toys in every, in every realm of life. Like there's, you know, there's guys that are like, 
you know, they're successful fucking actors that are fucking toys. They're just good because they suck and they're prolific. Right. So, you know, being a toy is, is being someone who's not mastered their craft, you know. Okay. I was a toy for a very long time, and I think that I probably became technically not a toy towards the end of my career, but I was a toy for fucking forever. Okay. Because I just didn't, you know, I, I'm, t- I'm not a toy anymore, but I was. Yeah. And I, and I own that shit. Well, isn't, well, isn't every, every, every graffiti artist would be a toy in the beginning then, right? writer starts out as a toy there's no way you can start out just dope like right out the gate there's no way okay so like so so a graffiti artist is called a writer then is yeah that... you're a writer yeah? yeah yeah okay i will say maddie's piece i showed him to some writers and maddie's piece is really good for a first piece it's still toy mm-hmm. but it's really fucking good for a first piece you gotta give him credit yeah but you also have to think for your first piece, you don't have a guy in your earphone directing you, and also a printed out PDF with step by step instructions. Yeah. And I had to buy his paint. For like, you know, he had assistance buying his paint. Yeah, it was just so ridiculous. So, but he, but he, I, he, 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 I get credit, he, but not too much. Yeah, he also ran out of paint, and he wasn't paying attention the whole time. He wasn't listening to you at some points. Stop filling it. It's my fault that he ran out of paint. I was actually being conservative with his paint buy. I didn't want him to have too much paint, and I should have doubled up. I, I actually under I underbought his paint, and I made him paint big like I paint. Yeah. And I should have doubled up that whole thing. I'm gonna tell them. I'm gonna text them too. I'm gonna tell them that we need to do the fucking the wall. Mm-hmm. We need to do a wall. We need to have a barbecue, and we need to shoot it. I think that that's what people want to see, right? Because they're like, definitely, people want it, want me to put my money where my mouth. Right, they're like, I want to see you do a fucking piece. Yeah, you know, we want to see you talk a lot of shit. And I'm like, I, I think I can pull it off. Yeah, it's been like ten years since I maybe it's been a long time since I actually did a real piece. But I think I'll like, I'll do it. I'll fucking sit there and suffer in the sun and do a piece. Right. So like, how did how did you start graffiti? Like, did you just start drawing stuff in high school and then decided you wanted to do it out on on walls or something? Like, how do you become? Yeah, like I. I um, I grew up in Venice, and like I was, um, I was an artist. I would draw. I mean, as a kid, I drew everything. I drew fucking comics and ninjas and all that shit. And then I started drawing what I saw, which was like gang graffiti and like Dogtown graphics, skate graphics. And I just kind of mimic them. Right. And I started seeing graffiti, and like at the time, I was really into like music. Like you know, I was really into rap music and. And I just was like, and I was into like, you know, in the time there wasn't a lot of West Coast rap. It was like New York rap was kind of like, it was before, you know, I got into it like, you know, I'm dating myself. It was old. Like the first, the first rap thing I bought was like LL Cool J's radio, mm-hmm. you know, and I mean, it blew my fucking mind. I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? Like he's talking about like some girl, like there's a song called Dear Yvette where he talks about this girl who fucks everybody. And like, I didn't even know what fucking was, but I was just <laughs> like, what? Like it, it did something to my brain. And I knew that that's all I wanted to listen to, and uh, and I and I thought that graffiti. I thought, well, as an artist, I should do graffiti because that's related to that music, and also it's what I saw where I grew up. So I became and I didn't know that. Like the reality is, like in L in in on the West Coast, most graffiti writers are like white kids, and um, like most of the most of the 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 crews, like a lot of. The, the the west side of LA graffiti is mostly white graffiti crews, right? Like there are, I'd say the majority of the people in the crews are white, right? Which I didn't know, and I thought that like I thought if I got involved with graffiti, I'd be involved in this world of like uh, rap and all these things, and it has nothing to do with music at all. Like West Coast graffiti has nothing to do with fucking rap music on any level. Mm-hmm. It does and it doesn't. Like it is, but it isn't connected. Like a lot of the guys starting out in West Coast LA graffiti in the eighties were fucking Heshers, you know. Mm. and like stoners and like they're in a, you know you have different you know in of course in like not on the west side of south central there's a whole different thing going on but there wasn't as much of a thriving graffiti scene as there was on the west side of la from like venice to you know all the way to like the valley and um yeah i got involved with it because i thought it was something that you know i thought it made sense and like you know i just like i also got involved with graffiti because like you i wanted to be a part of something i wanted to validate myself i wanted to prove myself and like you know, you start writing on things and it becomes very addictive. And like, you go out and you're like, I did that shit. Like, it's the first thing I did where I was like, I fucking did something. I, 
I fucking tagged that, you know, and, and also, like, I was a juvenile delinquent a little bit, so, like, it went hand in hand, you know, being, like, I never, I never ever once thought what I was doing was wrong. I never thought that tagging on shit was, yeah. you know, I, I grew up in a neighborhood where we're getting fucking shot, so I thought tagging on things was, like, chill, you right. know? Right, yeah. And, um, and, you know, like, so I, you know, I would do graffiti, and I, I fell in with, like, a group of guys, this crew, and... And uh, I started hanging out with them, and like they exposed me to a world outside of Venice, like this crew AWR MSK, right? Like I met them through. I was at Venice High. I knew a couple guys that were from Mar Vista that they were in the crew. I started tagging around with them, and then I did. They would they would take me to places. Like I, I didn't even have a car, so I would go with them. They pick me up in the car, and like they would take me to Westwood and like West LA and a motor yard, and they take me to all these places. I'd never been outside of Venice. I just was a fucking townie. Right. And I would go and I'd see, I'd see so much shit, you know, I, and I just was like, you know, and and I was learning about, it was an exciting time, the 90s, LA graffiti was like, everyone was, you were, if you were either, you were either a skateboarder, a graffiti writer, or a gang member, and that was it, huh. in my world, right? Um, I know there were a bunch of other scenes, there was punkers and goths and all this other shit, but like, in the world that I inhabited, those those were the three things that, those were the, you know, surfers, there were surfers also, right? right. But those things were like the thriving subcultures where I grew up in like, in, in the time I grew up. And also at that time too, it was very like, it was very testosterone fueled fucking machismo, like tough guy shit. Like right. it was like everyone looked tough and everyone like uh, pretended to be tough and uh, even if you weren't tough and you get your card pulled, you know, and then you find out you weren't that tough. So, so, so was it, was it pretty dangerous then to be a, a writer? I mean, it depends. Like, you typically weren't... It, it got heated in the later 90s, early 1000s, because the gang shit exploded, and it, and it, it bled into graffiti. And then there's this thing called tag banging crews where, where kids were just, like, hybrid things where they just get, like, fucking 100 kids in a crew, and they'd be tag banging, which is, like, graffiti writers... But they carry guns, but they're like, it'll be like a hundred little kids and they're bad at graffiti and they come in the yard and they fuck everyone up and they tag and they're like, they're just chaos. And mm-hmm. then the gangs got pissed because the tag bang crews were basically little mini gangs and the gangs were like, yo, you guys can't do this shit. So the gangs mm-hmm. fucking clamp down on the tag bangers and like, you guys got to pay taxes or you guys got to fucking, or they would just take a tag bang crew and be like, now you guys are all in the gang. Like oh, you guys yeah. are either going to be in our gang now or we're going to fucking shoot you guys. Holy so like shit. a lot of these tag bangers turned into gang bangers. You know, like gang culture and graffiti culture in LA in the 90s was everything. Like it was my entire fucking world. Like was it dangerous? Like, um, I don't know. It depends what your level, what you consider dangerous. Like, yeah, I got arrested a few times. You get into heated situations and you get, you know, like you're running from cops. Like, yeah. but it was fun, you know. Yeah. And like there's guys that know that. Um, you know, there's a, a couple guys, one guy specifically went to prison for graffiti. It's the first guy, um, that, that this dude GK, when he did time behind graffiti, we were like, holy shit, you can actually do time. He did wow. like a year for graffiti, which was like unheard of because he used to get a ticket. Holy shit. And, um, you know, but yeah, you know, you'd be out there like right on a freeway, you know, right on the side of the freeway with the cars rushing around and you'd be in mm-hmm. weird neighborhoods and gangsters come out and go, what the fuck are you doing? And you have to explain yourself. And then there was a time when there was like a green light on graffiti writers where like graffiti writers were just being fucked up on site by gangsters because, because of the tag bangers. Huh. So like, and cause they were trying to clamp down on the tag bangers. Like, okay, green light all graffiti. So like fools would be doing painting, painting graffiti and getting shot at, and, you know, and everyone was carrying guns too, for no reason. Like people that shouldn't be carrying guns were carrying guns. People like, you know, so there's fucking, it was a wild time. And also you didn't, talk about the fucking drugs like the drugs the drugs come into it it's like you know within all that within all that framework too we were all going to like raves this is all when i was in high school we're going mm-hmm. to fucking raves and rape you can loosen a genetics for three days and coming down downtown la in the middle of like some dude's turf and getting shot at i mean it was fucking chaos wow. and uh i would have had the other way though i loved it i mean it was fucking awesome but um but then at some point the, the party's got to stop right because yeah if i stayed at that point I would be dead, destitute, sick, or in jail, right? right. So I had to pull out at one point. And pulling out of that life is really fucking hard. Yeah. Because you're basically surrounded by a bunch of guys who are like, we're all cheering each other on to keep doing shit, right? Like, let's fucking go. Let's bomb. Let's yeah. party. Let's do this. Let's do that. And you pull out, and you're the outlier now. Now you're the guy who's like the fucking square. Right. And, you know, and right. like, I caught you. Like I got, I got into some shit from trying to stop being a part of things. 
Huh. And I think that they thought that I thought I was better than them, but I was like fucking terrified that I wasn't going to have a life, you know, because my life was going down the tubes, you know. Right. And a lot of them stayed in, you know, out of that life and like became successful artists and graffiti artists, which I have the utmost fucking respect for because I feel like those dudes won because now they're like painting and getting paid for it. You know, they found a way to transfer. Yeah. I didn't have faith in myself that I would be able to make a living as a painter. Right. I was like, these dudes, I was in a crew of guys who were fucking exponentially better than me. Like there was 10 guys in that crew who fucking chew me up and shit me out. And I'm like, I'll never make it. I'll never be better than these guys. So I got to do something else. You know? Yeah. Um, so is that is that when you is that when you started to uh, move towards the born and raised franchise? No, way way before that. I had um, I had like, God, I had like um, I had dropped out of high school. I moved out when I was like sixteen or seventeen. I dropped out of high school, fully dedicated my life to graffiti, uh, and then I just started like putting shit back together. I went to community college. I had a tattoo apprenticeship. Oh, I got yeah. to community college. I got my GED. I got accepted into a film school, UCLA film. Um, I went to film school as well. You did? Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, I was never, I was never good at school. So I kind of, I kind of disassociated most of the time I was there, but I did learn. I learned enough to know that I love making films and I learned enough to like mm-hmm. know how to make a film. But, like, I didn't learn anything about cinematography. Like, I didn't retain anything. Like, right. To this day, I still fucking, I still have blind spots with cinematography, and I have to, like, lean on my DP, you know? Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, I, I went to film school, and then, and then uh, you know, to pay the bills, I was doing graphic art stuff, and I just kind of got pulled into doing a company. I started this company back in the day. I made some money, and then I merged out of that company and started doing music videos, and I did I did some music videos for, like, you know, I don't know, I did a bunch of music videos for people that were, like, underground and kind of blew up. And, like, you know, I did, like, early Danny Brown, Iggy Azalea. Um, you know, oh, I did wow. a bunch of shit. Wow. Yeah, I did a whole bunch of music videos. I loved it so much. I would, each, like, I would pay for people's videos. I would, like, find, like, I found Iggy Azalea on the internet. I'm like, I think you're going to be huge. I'm going to fucking, let's make a video. I'll figure it out. I threw a couple grand into it. You know, I had money from my other company. And I was like, because I, I was just crazy. I didn't, I didn't care about, I didn't care about saving money. I didn't care about making money. I just wanted to make videos so fucking bad. I would do anything. Right. I just had to do it. And I did that for a couple of years. And I started born and raised with my partner, Sponto. Mm-hmm. I got pulled into that and pulled out of making uh, videos. But then I started making content for born and raised and making these like little mini micro films. And then, now I'm like merging back into film stuff. Yeah, I I saw a few of those little uh, mini films you did for Born and Raised. You I, did, yeah. You I don't know the titles of them, but I just saw them on like Vimeo or something. Because I was trying to do research for you, but I couldn't find like anything on you. So <laughs> I just based most of my questions off of what I uh, saw from Powerful Truth Angels. But yeah, I did see a few of your stuff. Your, Which one? Do you remember anything? I want to know what you watched. Uh, I wish I, I wish I knew the title of it. Um, no, just describe it. It was just like it was on a basketball court, I think. Was it the black and white one? No, no. I just I just remember it was like. Uh, was it the Lakers one that was on a basketball court? I don't remember. It was it was a few weeks ago when I watched it, so it's not like fresh in my brain. I wonder why you couldn't find it. Did you Google Alex slash Tutom? You couldn't find anything on me. Yeah, well, I found a little bit, but not as not as much as I I would like to. It's not like when you Google Maddie and you get hit with a storm of content. <laughs> yeah, well, I've I've been following Maddie for years and years though, so I kind of already like if I were to have an interview with Maddie, I'd I'd already have a bunch of questions prepared. It's interesting being Maddie, like partnering with Maddie, because like I'm I'm a fully like I'm my own person. I have my own personality. I don't give a fuck about any of this other stuff. Maddie's my friend. Yeah. But I don't care about Maddie's like professional life. He's just my friend. Yeah. And it's really weird for me to be his co host and be like like I forget that like people are there for Maddie and like these are Maddie's fans and like yeah. I come in the picture and they're just like, This guy's a fucking dick and yeah. I'm like, No, Maddie's my homeboy, like we talk <laughs> shit. Like but I'm like a I'm I'm my own little person. I have my own little world yeah. that's got nothing to do with him, and that's also a whole world that's like 
mm-hmm. nobody really knows about unless no. you did. It's like born and raised and videos of graffiti and all this weird shit, yeah. which is parallel to Maddie's world, you know. But yeah. it's just weird being like, like, because I'm not. I I wouldn't say that I'm like. I don't think that I'm a. Like technically, it's the Maddie show that I'm on, but it's our show that we share and we co-host. You know, so it's like a weird dynamic because people are coming to see Maddie, right? Well, not. I don't think at this point they are. I feel like you've established yourself enough to where, I feel like Powerful Truth Angels wouldn't be what it is without you, and no. Maddie. Right. It's definitely. It's definitely a thing where it's us for yeah. sure. And I think for Powerful Truth Angels, I talked to Maddie. I was talking about him. Actually, I was talking to him this morning, like super early, and we're talking about it. We're talking about what we want to do. And like, we're going to break out. We're going to pull PTA out of his YouTube channel and build our own channel. That's a good and idea. Just like long term, be like, this is a separate entity. It's got nothing. Like, if you look at Maddie's content, PTA has nothing to do with any of it. It's fucked up. Like yeah. his content, is very like, this is how you make chili. I love you guys. Fucking PTPMA. Yeah. And then our content is just like, because Maddie also is like, Maddie also. Here's the thing about Maddie is that dimensionally, Maddie has much more going on than what his persona is. You sit and talk to Maddie, he's very interesting, he's really good at talking, he's actually really funny. And together, we have a whole separate thing that people don't get, like the masses don't get it yet, mm-hmm. right? And I, and I tell Maddie, I go, Maddie, let's just do this for a while. Let's just, let's just do this thing. I have a lot going on, you have a lot going on. This is fun. This is a fun, let's just do it. And I guarantee you in a little bit, give it a couple of years. And I guarantee it'll be something that will be separate from the rest of your life. And we can do whatever we want with it. Yeah, absolutely. With, with, with using him as a springboard for his, for his fucking, you know, he's got the following yeah. and use that as a, as a springboard. And I got lucky because if I started a podcast on my own, it would be doing nothing. And no one, no one, it would take me years to get a fucking following. Yeah, exactly. Like that's, that's the position that I'm in right now. You know, position you're in. sorry, you got to find a Maddie. You got to find a fucking. You got to hook a. You got to harpoon a big fucking. You know, a big mm-hmm. whale and ride him. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm still. I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. Well, dude, you, you, listen. Uh, I have a lot of respect for tenacity and um, and and sticking to things. And I think that eventually, if you stick to things and you keep doing them, yeah. Uh, that's that's what I practice, and I, I I hold on for fucking dear life. And that's, that's usually out. yeah. That's my philosophy. I've been doing a podcast every week consistently for the past two years, and like if I go a week without doing a podcast, I feel like absolute garbage. Like it's I, like an it's like an addict. It's like a thing. Like I, I'm so scared of not doing it. Yeah, like I might have to miss a show, and I'm freaked out. I don't want to miss a show. Mm-hmm. You know. And like I'm so far into it now, like I'm I'm 176 episodes deep. Like if I stop, it's gonna ruin me. You know, I can't stop. You're in too deep now. You can't get out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And but but like it's not like it's a burden to me. Like I enjoy it, and I I'm a I'm a I'm actually obsessed with podcasts in general. That's that's all I do. I don't watch TV. I don't really listen to music anymore. I do a little bit, but like. Any free time I have, if I'm driving, if I'm doing dishes, if I'm mowing the lawn, I'm listening to a podcast. Dang. And Powerful Truth Angels has fallen into my rotation of podcasts that I listen to. Amazing. I love to hear that. I yeah. love that. I love that. I love that it's in the same, you know, because I listen to it once in a while to get an idea of what's going on and try to get better at it, but I don't listen to it every week. Mm-hmm. And I love that people listen to it because I listen to podcasts obsessively. I can't stop listening to podcasts. It's like every every waking moment of my life is a yeah. podcast. Me too. Working. And it's fucked up. Like I'm, and if, I watch TV. I, that's when I turn it off. But like I, I go to sleep to them. I listen to the shower. I walk the dog. I gotta have it. It's like a friend, you know. Yeah. And the fact that I can be a part of that, like the reaction I can get from people. I tell Maddie, I'm a Maddie. The numbers aren't like what your numbers are, but I'm telling you something. The reaction I'm getting from people is like, people are invested in us, right? People are invested in what we're doing. They're understanding our humor, which is like, it's not like our humor is like, um, you know, incredibly uh, complicated or brilliant, but it's not super mass accessible. It's a little like, it's a little bit, you know, you have to kind of, it's not, you know, like, we're not comedic geniuses, but we're also not idiots. So it's like, I think that it's not instantly accessible. 
And I think that people are accessing the humor and re- and, and, and playing on and like becoming part of the jokes with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to off in about four minutes, heads up. I got it at 11 o'clock. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, when people, like, go, when I first was introduced to PTA, you know, yeah. obviously, just like everyone else, I just thought, oh, Maddie has a podcast now. Who the fuck yeah. is this guy? And so without the context of you two together, it just se- it seemed like you were just being a dickhead to Maddie. But when you right. get to know you guys and your guys' chemistry, you're like, oh, okay, that's, they're obviously, like, best friends. Yeah. I don't know if you're best friends, but you're, like, really good friends with each other, and that's just your dynamic. Yeah, I love Maddie, and like uh, you know, I think that everyone that's typically the funny thing about me is if you're a friend of mine, we're invariably going to be in business together at some point. Right. I'm either going to ask you to help me do something, or I'm going to hire you to do something, or I'm going to do. And Maddie's a perfect example of like we're friends, and then we just started working together. And I, you know, I try to work with. I'm I, I'm lucky that you know, look, if 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 this thing could bear fruit and I can make money doing it, it'd be insane. It'd be the dumbest job on the planet because I literally just have to get up and talk. And it's over. Yeah, you know? well, people do it, you know. Yeah, some people are killing it. Are you kidding? These people are making fucking. These people are making a million Lots. dollars in yeah. podcast. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that's your job? It's insane. Well, I mean, you're like getting out of bed and podcasting. That's the ultimate goal. But like, right? Do you guys have sponsors at all? You do, don't you? Yeah, we have sponsors, but they're like, the the money just goes back into like Jason and you know. Right. Because you know, it's a whole thing, the YouTube thing, you know, it's a whole, like, we don't, we has got to cut it, edit it, shoot it, the whole nine. we got to pay Jason, and, you know, we, like, we have sponsors, and we do the ad reads, but they're not crazy, you know. Yeah. And they're still feeling us out, because they're trying to see where we're going to go. And, like, these sponsors really start coming in when you're, like, at probably, like, you know, the heavier sponsors are probably when you start hitting 100K views on, on average. Right, know? right. But they're smaller sponsors, I think there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat, you know. Yeah, um, for sure. Well, you got to hit the road. I got to get on a call. I got to talk to my shrink in a minute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, it was nice having you on. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, dude. I'm happy to happy to jump on with you, and thanks for asking me. Sorry, yeah. I just, sorry I spent the first 20 minutes spiraling about, um, about you know, the, the country. But no. I, you know, no. I've, I, I wanted that to happen. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Well, uh, well uh, let me know when it all... When do you do it? Next week comes out? Yeah, it'll be Monday. Okay. Yeah. I'll check it out. Perfect. All, all right, right, guys. Thanks for talking to me. Yeah, have a good one. You too.